You can scoot up a little bit if you need to. Then. Or, or not. I'm good. <laughs> Keep your distance. <laughs> So what is it today, Coach? Sunny, cold, rainy? I mean, you're getting a little bit of everything. Is that kind of kind of a Bay Area a, spring? But actually, this I mean, this is about as cold and wet as it gets. And so if, if this is as bad as it gets, I mean, everybody's going to be just fine. You know, we're, we get spoiled here with the weather for sure. You had some big names in, in the house this week with Alex Mack and Ron Rivera. Can you talk a little bit about their interaction with the players and what it means to have guys like them associated with the program? Yeah. I mean, what a great day yesterday to have Coach Rivera, Alex, come visit us. Um, Coach Rivera, we have a coaches clinic going on. Had a great turnout. Uh, local coaches and even guys from Southern California visiting. And Coach Rivera was here all day and uh, talked to the team yesterday morning, which was fantastic. And spent time here at practice, spent time with us as us coaches, and then talked to the high school coaches last night. But really. Uh, just amazing guy, as you as you all know. Uh, he's obviously a fantastic player, but uh, and decorated coach, and kind of seen it a number of different ways, and been through a lot. But really, just uh, uh, it was great having him around and interacting with everybody. And then Alex uh, came up and spent the day with us as well. Alex Mac is you know one of the best centers that's played the game. And, uh, I was here when Alex got here, I remember his freshman year and when he got here and coming in as a pretty unheralded recruit. And just incredibly hardworking, smart, tough guy, very talented as well. But just talk to the guys, you know, talk to the O-line about what it takes to be a great player, what it means to be a Cal student athlete. So, you know, it's just when you get guys like that coming around, spending time with our players. Part of the reason we come here is to experience interactions like that, so it was really cool. He may, may well uh, join your dad in the Hall of Fame, too. Yeah, I mean, statistically, when you look at what, what he did and the level he played at and the consistency, I think he was his, I remember he's like seven-time Pro Bowler. I don't think he missed a game in his first five years playing. Uh, the model of consistency and playing playing at such a high level so consistently like people can have a good game or a, a great you know season maybe but to do it over and over and over again takes a special you understand that not only the talent but just the approach and how he worked at it and you know it's a lot of what he shared with the team do you have a sense for how the players soaked up this time with those guys well i think it'd be great for you to ask him that i mean i they are all eyes and ears when those guys are talking. And so, again, to have them come around, it means a lot to the program. And, it, you know, it's, they're doing it not for themselves. They're not, they don't get anything out of it other than helping out and being visible and interacting with the, the team because they care about Cal and they care about the program and the players. And so, uh, that's what makes it that respectful. respectful. It's, not, it's not about them. They're doing it to, to support the university and our team. One week down, are there some general areas of your team that are kind of talking about over court practices? Well, I mean, you really could kind of go through each group and talk about the growth that's been made, which you expect. You need to have significant growth after one week. We talked on it after day one. Day one can't be the highlight of spring ball. And so I, uh, today was very competitive, which I appreciated. You know, we're Saturday, Saturday morning. Uh, spring break's about to start, so the uh, conventional wisdom would say, oh, you know, guys are going to have one foot out the door. Not at all like that. I mean, it was competitive. Guys were plugged in. They, they practiced extremely hard. Uh, some great individual plays on both sides of the ball today. So we just need to, that's what we need to see. We need to see good contested football uh, throughout spring and watch the individuals compete with each other and get better. In earlier springs, you've had a tough time filling out some position groups, but it seems that most positions are, are fairly stacked with guys, and you've got a lot of portal guys that are in here and JC transfers, and a ton of them are flashing. That's got to be good to see. It is, and it, I think it, you know, college football in this era, we had 22 or 23 newcomers in January. Uh, you didn't have that many traditionally in, pa in the past, so you have more people in spring ball. Um, 
as you mentioned, most of the positions, you know, if you're healthy, you got uh, you got bodies, and uh, you know, we expect those guys that we brought in here out of the transfer portal to to compete and, and help us. That's why we brought them in. So, it, but it is good to see them. I mean, you. Marcus Harris today made a play down there. I don't know if you guys saw that. It was an unbelievable interception. It wasn't like it was a bad throw or anything by the offense. He just made a really fantastic play. You know, a couple of other DBs, Jair has shown up. Uh, the receivers, Mikey Matthews has showed up. JB, Tobias. Like, oh, there's a bunch of guys uh, who are new to the program that have flashed. Doesn't mean they are there yet, but it's good to see them show up in these competitive situations. Coach, how would you um, assess the quarterback play in today's practice? Um, you know, the video will tell the story. I mean, Fernando continues to, each and every day, just comes out here and works to get better, which he does. He's throwing the ball with authority. <coughs> I think he's got good comfort with the offense, but he's still a young player. You know, he played one year and uh, he takes every opportunity to get better, whether it's a one-on-one -on -one rep, seven-on-seven -seven team. So as long as he continues to do that, he's going to improve. And Chandler, uh, just even from day one, Monday to today, you can see him feeling a little bit more comfortable each and every day because he's played a lot of football. But the language, the timing, you know, the concepts, it might be a little bit different. Um, getting used to that. But he's a uh, He's very calm out there. Like I said, he's played a lot of football, so I think he's done a really nice job in week one as well. How would you um, how would you say the team is adjusting to a new offensive? Uh, yeah, I think it's been seamless. I mean, Coach Bless is a really good football coach. Coach Gilbert has uh, been been awesome for that room as well. So I, uh, it's been as as seamless as it could possibly be. I mean, they're really good coaches. They're great communicators. They're good people. Guys like being around them. So it's, uh, it's gone really well. Would you say there's overlap from last year's system? Yeah, there's a lot of similarities. Uh, we didn't change any words that we didn't need to change, but there was there's some adjustments. You know, like like every year you're looking to get better, and especially when there's a new play caller and you got some new ideas in the building, there's going to be some tweaks. But overall, it, it was it's very comfortable for the, the returners. You know. Mm -hmm couple new concepts or maybe how you package things or what you call it might have been adjusted a little bit but uh, you know for the most part a lot of carryover. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about what Kadarius Callaway brings to the running back room? Well he sure showed up on that last run didn't he? I mean that he's had some real nice uh, runs. I think Kadarius is the guy I was looking forward to watching in pads. You know it's it's you know when you get out here in spiders it's all good everybody's running fast and you get kind of excited about certain guys and certain positions it's just really hard to evaluate when you're in spiders especially that position so I was excited to see him in pads uh, I think he's he's another guy just got to get more and more with uh, the verbiage um, you know some of the techniques but he, he flashed and we brought him in here for a reason and uh, we're glad he's here. A lot of the speedy backs don't tend to be as physical, but he seems to combine those two pretty well. Yeah, I, I wouldn't. Yeah, he's not a finesse guy. I mean, he does have speed, but yeah, you're not looking at him thinking he's gonna. The way he's played in the past and what he's shown so far, you know, he's not a guy that's afraid to use his shoulder pads. A couple of young guys that struggle a little bit catching the ball consistently seem to be catching a lot this year. Dorch and and uh, Isaiah Hunter. Yeah, Mojo, uh, George has had a good start. He's got speed and again, another guy getting here, going through that transition. First of all, he's coming from a long way away, still a young player, um, even when he joined us, but getting you know more comfortable with the offense, how to run the routes, when, when to expect the ball. You know, I, I just think he's, He's a guy that we got to continue to watch grow, and uh, I'm really excited about what he's done thus far. We just got to continue to stack the days, um, but he has shown up and made some pretty uh, exciting plays just because he does have speed. He's got legitimate speed. And then Isaiah, uh, Isaiah, it's all about consistency. He's still learning a lot. He's a young guy, and he's, you know, physically he's big, he's strong, he can run. Now it's about becoming more consistent, knowing what to do, and executing the plays, and then when the ball does show up, it's being a consistent catcher. And Cole Bosch is a guy transferring from Colorado. It yeah. seems like he's catching everything inside. Yeah, Cole's done a really good job. Uh, him and Isaac both. We got two guys that have joined us uh, 
Uh, I mean, that whole receiver room there, I guess, I don't know how many there's total, but a Isaac bunch Torres. of bunch and Yeah, Isaac done a good job too. But Cole, real competitive and strong, local guy. Really impressed with his work ethic and how he's competing. And same with Isaac. Both those guys have done a really good job. Inside back are one of the few places you're thin right now. Yeah. That's what it's like from your eyes to see those freshmen taking the, that kind of thing. Well, yeah, I mean, they're in there with the ones. I mean, as a... I mean, there's a lot of young youngsters taking reps with the ones and twos. Um, we got, you know, obviously, Cade's not uh, participating right now. He'll be back. We got another uh, veteran that'll be joining us who's a, a talented player. Uh, it's really good for these young guys, but they're getting thrown into the deep end. I mean, that's the best way to describe it. And they're, they're trying, they're competing, and they're showing some stuff, but they're, uh, to say that they're ready for that, they're not, you know, but they're learning on the move, which we need them to do because we need them out. We need inside linebackers practice. It doesn't make sense to blitz a lot when you don't have guys that can get to the quarterback. But it's like you don't have the speed, especially in the defensive backfield, to consistently put pressure on the, the quarterback. Are you seeing that? Jair has a couple we'll, of blocked passes. Yeah, already. we'll find out. Yeah. Uh, we were just talking about that today. We like to bring those DBs, whether it's the corner or the nickel or even the safeties, uh, in our some of our pressures, but ultimately they got to be productive because if they're not productive when, when we pressure with them, then we're not going to call it, you know? So it's we're trying to find out who has some of those abilities to come off the edges and Nick has got a feel for blitzing, run and pass game. Um, and uh, I, they have shown up, but we got to continue to see that over and over. But it does give you some hope because of the, the twitchiness and the quickness and the timing and seeing the ball come out. We got a couple PBUs, as you mentioned, so that's a good thing. It's just, just a quick look. It looks like um, Nick Morrow is making a, a nice transition, getting a lot of reps with the ones because you guys have some guys out. But, yeah. But how how's that transition been? Well, he's ta he's t taking the a ton of reps with the ones, and he's making the most of those opportunities. Nick is a physically talented guy. I mean, he is big. He's all of I don't know what do we six seven plus maybe three hundred plus. I mean, he is and he can run. He's a talented guy. He's, uh, you know, when we first recruited Nick, I remember he came to our summer camp for a workout. He was a tight end DN from Flagstaff, and he was just kind of a big athlete. We weren't quite sure exactly how big he was going to get, but we brought him here and played O line. And uh, Coach Blush has done a really good job with him. And every day you can see him get a little bit better. And so he's got a bright future as long as he continues to work at it and, and grind and. Know, own learning that position, I think he's got a bright future. When you see guys like Andrews make the transition from receiver to tight end and bring that receiving skill set, and Morrow playing tight end, bringing that to the offensive line, does that give you a little bit extra boost that those guys get acclimated? Well, I would say, yeah, when, when you're you know, moving from a skill position to a bigger skill or a line position, you the athleticism is the thing that you'd, you'd hope shows up, and I think that's true for both of those. For Jack, play tight end he's got the receiving skills and he's also a really competitive guys competitive guy and he'll stick his face in there and block and you know Nick from being a tight end in and playing tackle he's got the toughness for it he just needs to learn how to play and he's each and every day like I said working with coach Blush, you see the growth and he's he's still a young guy but he's got He's got things you just can't coach. I mean, it's hard to coach somebody to be 6'7", 3'10", and be able to run. I don't know what drills you do for that. So we're really excited about that and his transition. We just need to keep working at it. Having guys with good feet and good speed playing on the edge, does that open up the outside running game for you more? Yeah, as many, you just said it, size, agility, strength, and speed, as many of those traits as you can get, the better off you are because then you can run a lot of things, you know. It really opens uh, opens it up. There's just, the reality is there's just only so many people walking the earth that can do that. And so we're trying to train these guys and they're doing a heck of a job. Uh, Coach Blush has done a fantastic job since he's been here with them and I think that'll give us some flexibility if we continue to grow in that in that room. Okay. All right, thanks. All right, thank you very much. We're looking for big, fast, and athletic, and strong, <laughs> and mean. We'll let you know if we, we find any. We haven't seen any extras just that are just laying around that aren't doing anything. <laughs> All right, we got